Hi Year 10, um, just before we start into today's stuff, I wanted to do a quick recap of what we had talked about with light before Christmas, because we just got this topic started, and then we had the break, so I just want to remind you about a few things. So, um, first of all, we were just making sure we knew like what type of objects give off light, so anything that produces its own light, we would describe it as being luminous, and then light is just a way of transferring energy. So this is on page 49, by the way, in your notes. So if you have your notes open with me, then you can um, fill in anything that is maybe missing or um, just follow along. Then we spent a little bit of time, if you remember, looking at the energy transfers that were taking place with particular light sources. So I'll not worry about going over those too much. Now, this little diagram here we drew to show how we actually see things that aren't luminous. So anything, which is most things that don't produce their own light, uh, we see them because they reflect the light that is coming from a luminous um, source. So this wee guy reading his book here, the, the only thing producing its own light in this here is this um, light bulb. So light always travels in straight lines and anytime we're drawing light, we draw it as an arrow, um, just to show the direction that the light is traveling in. So there's going to be light that's going to travel in straight lines to his eyes. So that's how he sees the light. Now, it's also um, it's also going everywhere in the room. Now, we don't draw on every light, right? The whole thing would just be covered um, in straight lines. But because this question was um, seeing how he could read his book, which doesn't produce his own light, then we show that the light comes down here and then gets reflected off the book. And that's how he could see that. If the question had asked how he could see the dog, we would have drawn like from here to the dog and then reflect him back up to his eye. So anything that doesn't produce its own light just reflects light from a light source that's nearby. So over onto page 51 then, we spent a bit of time looking at what actually happens whenever light hits a surface. So I'll go to the one at the top of the page actually. So anytime we're um, labeling light rays, the one that's going into the situation, we call the incident ray. And whenever light hits the surface, it can do one of three things or a mixture of these three things. So some light might get reflected and how much gets reflected will just depend on the, the material that we're talking about and um, like how shiny it is. Some will get absorbed by the material and some will get transmitted through. And again, how much of these ones just depends on the material itself. So if something's transparent, then most of the light, if not all of the light, will get transmitted through it. Um, if it's opaque, then none will get transmitted through the material. Okay. Then on page 52, we've got definitions of a bunch of the keywords in this topic. So I'm not going to go through them all now. If you were off the day we did this and you need to fill these in, then pause the video and write these in now. Okay, so here's the next ones. So again, if you need to, pause and write those in. Okay, so on to 53. And um, in the last lesson there, we started looking at shadows and shadows is gonna be a focus of part of our lesson here today. So I do just wanna remind you about that. So we get shadows simply because light travels in straight lines. If light didn't travel in straight lines, then we wouldn't have shadows because it would be able to maneuver its way around things and light up every area. So because light travels in straight lines, we get shadows. So I've got a light, just a normal light up here. Um, if I have my hand in the way, then we get a shadow where um, the light is getting blocked from my hand. Now, if you look here, you can still see something. So this isn't a complete shadow and it's because there's lots of different light sources. Like I've got a window over there and all that. So there's um, different levels of shadow, I suppose. Now, whenever we're drawing diagrams to show how a shadow forms, um, this is what we drew down. So again, if you were off that last lesson, you need to get these uh, copied in. So pause as you need to, to copy things in. So we have our object here and then we have a screen. So a screen is just any surface that a shadow can form on. A point source of light just means it's like a concentrated light source. Now, we, as same as with that wee guy with the book, we don't draw every single light ray in this situation in. Otherwise, there'd be light rays drawn all over our page. We only draw really the important ones. So there's light coming off all everywhere here from this. 
but at this light ray here is the one that is going to form the edge of the shadow same with this one because any of the light rays that hit in between these two are going to get blocked by this object so no light is going to be able to form here and then any that's on the other side of these then there's nothing blocking the light there's no object in the way of those so they are going to light up that screen so again important points here straight line always use ruler and always draw the arrows to show the direction of the light rays um the the proper dark shadow where absolutely no light reaches we call that an umbra and it'll be proper proper dark no light and it'll have a sharp edge if we have this point source here okay so over the page on 54 we have the situation if we have an extended light source um, so it's just a bigger light source where um, it's not just that one point, one wee tiny concentrated light. And what happens in this situation is that we get a little bit of a blurry shadow. So it's more like that shadow of my hand there is quite blurry. Um, so it's more of a, it's a more common shadow that we would get. So it's the same idea. We don't draw every single light ray. We draw the important ones. So as we would have been doing this in class, I would have talked about them as we were doing them. So let's look at these two here. So these, between these two, it's the same as before. There's going to be this area where absolutely no light can reach. So this is going to be in complete darkness. And again, same as before, it's called the umbra where no light reaches. Now, if we draw a line from the bottom here up past the top of this object here, then that means, like if I was to follow along, oops, if I was to follow along here, there's some light is going to reach this area. And then the same here from down from the top past the bottom, there's some light is going to reach in this area. So the word that we use for those is penumbra. Um, so it's like the fuzzy edge that you would see on a shadow and it's because some light reaches there. Same again, we label everything in our diagram, um, straight lines for our light rays and we put arrows on them. Now down at the bottom, I tried, if you remember, this was a bit of a fail, but I tried to draw you like a more 3D version of that because sometimes people can't visualize what this is. So if we have our extended light source and we're sort of looking as if we're looking towards this screen here, that's what we would see. So you would have your complete shadow in the middle, the umbra, and then this fuzzy edge around the outside, the pen umbra. This is maybe a bit exaggerated the way I've drawn it, but hopefully it helps you get the idea. So over the page on 55, this is the first thing I want you I want you to sit and have a little play here with shadows. So a ray box, you're obviously not going to have that at home, but just use the torch on your phone or a torch as your light source. This can be any object and the screen, just the wall. Okay. And we're going to investigate how moving these different things around, how that affects the size of the shadow. So there's, it gives you a list here of things that you can investigate. And I've made a wee note here of how I, want you to record your results it's really really straightforward it's not a massive e experiment but it is interesting to see so the size of the card so if you just change that for a different object so a bigger card or a bigger object say what happens to the shadow is the shadow going to be bigger or is it going to be smaller the distance between the ray box and the card so in that one you would keep these two the same and then move your light source closer and further away so again, bigger distance between the card and the ray box, say what happens to the shadow, is that bigger or smaller? Distance between the ray box and the screen. So you're going to be changing in that one, the screen, yeah. Yep, change the, keep, sorry, keep these two the same and then just change your screen. So move both of these away from the wall if you're, if you're using a wall that you can't move, obviously. Um, and the distance between the card and the screen, keep these two the same. And, oh, move this in. Yeah, distance, with, no, no, I tell a lie, keep these two the same and move this into the screen. Oh, took me a wee minute there. Okay, so again, I've just said, list these all like bigger distance, what happens to the size of the shadow? So I'm gonna try and um, demonstrate for you here what I mean by that, back in a second. Okay, so I've just got my phone <clears throat> with the torch turned on. Uh, my wall here is just going to be my screen and then my pen is just going to be my object. So um, 
well, for changing the size of the object, I suppose I could replace the pen with my hand and then say, right, well, what's going to happen to the size of the shadow? Hopefully we know that bigger object equals bigger shadow. Um, what's the next one? The distance between the ray box and the card. So my light source and the card is my object. So if I make my distance away from that bigger, have a look and see what's happening to the size of the shadow. Um, distance between the ray box and the screen. So keep on changing those things. So move everything both closer, further away. And it's all about changing those and investigating. I'm not going to do them all. I want you to do them yourself. Okay, so it's a nice and straightforward setup. Hopefully everyone will be able to do that. So if you haven't done it already, pause this video, go and do that with investigation with a, with a torch or your phone, um, an object and a wall and list your results. Okay, now next little thing is about laser light. So um, I think we all know like a wee laser pointer. Yeah, that's the type of light that we're talking about. But lasers come in lots of different strengths and that means they uh, can be very, very useful. So they can be used to do lots of different things, which we're going to list down the bottom of this page. Um, but little weak ones um, are just basically like a little a wee light source, but a particular type. Okay, so laser, if you can rhyme this off, you sound really, really fancy. So um, laser actually, the word comes from what it actually means. So a laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So it's, it's if you can rhyme that off and it's easy to learn, you sound really, really fancy. Okay, so let's write it in. So the term laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission, which just means to give out of radiation. It's quite cool, isn't it? I quite like that the word itself stands for something. Okay, so get that written in. Now, we're going to fill in um, what is a laser just with some notes here. So I'm going to write them in um, and then I need you to copy them down. I'll go over them once they're written in though, okay? So um, I'll go over this and then pause it to get it written in, but just wait a wee second. So a laser produces a very narrow beam of light. Uh, the light is just one single wavelength and all the waves are in step with each other or we would say that is in phase. Now, this bit here won't mean much to you at the minute. The one single wavelength bit hopefully will by the time we um, get on to talk about like white light, like normal light. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about different wavelengths and things there. This other bit is just a wee bit extra. Okay, so it just means they're all together. Laser beams can travel long distances and can concentrate a lot of energy on a small area. So laser beams don't spread out like normal light does. And because of that, that means they can focus a lot of energy on this really, really tiny area. And because of that, that means they're very, very useful. So some uses for them are here. So um, precision tools for cutting in surgery, like laser eye surgery, I'm sure you've heard of that, to carry internet and TV signals, laser printers, barcode scanners and DVD players. So if you pause and get this bit written in, done, okay. Then pause again and get this bit written in. Right, I was gonna get us to do the questions here on 57 and 58 as well as some other ones. But um, if you've spent your time doing that practical and things, I don't, know if you're going to have enough time to do all of that so we're going to leave these questions here and um, for now we'll come back to them don't worry so uh what i need you to do for me now are the questions on page 59 so these ones and there's room for you to answer them on here so do the questions on 59 and the questions on page 60. so i'll have that written in the instructions as well but they're the two pages of questions that you have to do today okay so get on with those. I will ask to see um, your answers to these and I'll see you next week. Bye.